Okay, so I also wanted to talk a little bit about the running intensity and anaerobic threshold as well and try and link it with some of the kind of physiological mechanisms that might be occurring. Now, what we can see is we've got three states here. We've got low intensity running, moderate intensity running and intense activity as well. So sprint kind of sprinting or hill work. And what I want to describe is what's happening with regards to the anaerobic threshold at each of these at each of these uh, phases. Now, before I talk about th what's happening, it's very important to actually understand that the although we use the term anaerobic threshold, when we think about it, we should actually be thinking uh, not of a threshold, but of the transition of energy sources from aerobic to anaerobic. And there's lots of events, interrelated physiological events that are occurring that are basically um, contributing to the transition from aerobic to anaerobic sources and essentially the threshold is that kind of critical point when we get when we start to accumulate you know the, the factors that i was talking about just a few moments ago co2 lactate hydrogen etc uh, so essentially the threshold is that critical point but before that there are a myriad of events that are actually happening uh, that are more thinking of them more like a transition from aerobic to anaerobic sources so we start off with low intensity we start off with low intensity um, activity and essentially we've actually got uh, ATP which is being produced mainly by aerobic the aerobic uh, energy pathway called oxidative phosphorylation that produces large amounts of ATP uh, and it's for low intensity exercise which we can sustain for quite a long period of time um, Essentially, what's happening here, as I talked about just previously, is that ventilation is increasing linearly with oxygen consumption. Uh, we're not producing much lactate. Lactate levels are quite low. Now, when we start transitioning into a moderate intensity, we're going to recruit uh, some type 2 muscle fibers as well. Uh, and we're going to be having a mix of aerobic and anaerobic energy systems for ATP production. Okay, So it's, you know, it's not a binary on and off switch. We are using... Uh, you know, a combination when we're doing moderate intensity exercise, we're using a combination of aerobic and anaerobic energy sources. Uh, and at this stage, ventilation is still closely matching oxygen consumption. So obviously, the muscles need quite a fair amount of oxygen, and your ventilatory system is able to work to deliver that oxygen to uh, to the muscles. Now, lactate levels are actually rising in this stage, um, but lactate clearance is actually greater. Uh, than the accumulation. So one of the mechanisms of lactate uh, clearance is actually the shuttling of lactate from type 2 muscle fibers to type 1 muscle fibers within the same muscle belly. So you've got a muscle belly with type 2 and type 1 muscle fibers. Uh, you're starting to do more kind of um, uh, like moderate intensity exercise. You're producing lactate uh, in the type 2 fibers and that's then shuttled to the type 1 fibers and the type 1 fibers actually use that lactate for aerobic metabolism. So generally people think lactate is quite bad so they think oh you've produced lactate the muscle is going to fatigue that's it but actually the 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 muscle or the body has a very clever way of actually utilizing that lactate at moderate intensities um, and actually shuttling it to type 1 fibers to be used for aerobic metabolism so then we move on to the intense activity um, that's actually happening. So when we start to do whatever exercise you're doing, if you start to uh, crank up the intensity, then we're going to use more type 2 muscle fibers. They're going to require very uh, significant or large amounts of ATP. Uh, and by this point, you would have transitioned uh, close to that threshold uh, because anaerobic glycolysis will become your main energy source and it will produce lots of carbon dioxide. Uh, and at, it's at this stage, it's when you're doing very uh, intense exercise where we'll start to get um, some of that hyperventilation occurring as well to try and breathe out the uh, CO2. And in fact, ventilation becomes disproportionate to oxygen, as I've just said previously, uh, becomes disproportionate to oxygen consumption. Uh, it doesn't match that need for the oxygen to the working muscles. It actually increases even further the ventilation to blow off the excess carbon dioxide that's being produced as a result of anaerobic glycolysis. Um, now, in the, when you're doing very intense activity, the reason why we will start to fatigue quite quickly is because your lactate levels will now start 
uh, rising exponentially okay and they will actually exceed the ability of the, uh, the lactate clearance mechanism so all of the mechanisms that are involved in uh, clearing away the lactate um, they are basically not sufficient because so much lactate is being produced the clearance can't match the production and so you start to get an e a sharp rise in the lactate uh, and that will ultimately lead to uh, accumulation of hydrogen ions uh, enzymes will start to uh, will stop working uh, and then you'll get fatigue and you have to stop exercise and that's when we perceptually also feel um, like we don't want to exercise any further and if we had like a ratings of perceived exertion scale then this kind of uh, physiological events that are occurring would be reflecting the really hard uh, stages that we would describe in terms of our perception uh, of the exercise. So one of the ways that we can actually determine the anaerobic or ventilatory threshold in the laboratory is to do a submaximal incremental exercise test and in this we'd get a participant uh, hooked up onto a treadmill or cycle ergometer, uh, they'd have a mask on or be collecting the gases that they're actually uh, breathing in and out uh, or we actually collect the expired air to be very precise uh, and then what you can see on the screen is a graph that would be produced from that information uh, from a submaximal exercise test now um, what we can see is two values that are being uh, given we're seeing the vevco2 so this is the ratio of expired air so the amount of air that we breathed out and how much um, co2 is actually in that air so the volume of co2 that's being produced uh, and we also can measure the vevo2 which which is the uh, again looking at the expired air and the ratio of that expired air relative to the amount of oxygen that's being consumed now what we can see on on that graph is that around about 250 meters per minute we start to see the effects of um, the respiratory changes occurring reflecting anaerobic threshold so we, we actually see oxygen levels or oxygen consumption increasing uh, dramatically that's fine that's what happens when you do intense exercise but more importantly we actually look at what's happening with the vevco 2 so the ratio of the co2 produced in the expired air and we actually see that at the anaerobic threshold the the carbon dioxide levels actually start to reduce and that's because you start to get that those physiological mechanisms we were talking about increased bicarbonate buffering uh, your chemoreceptors are activated and they're causing an increase in ventilation or hyperventilation so we're blowing off we're able to blow off that co2 so that if we were, if we take an air sample then we actually start to see a reduction in the amount of CO2 at the anaerobic threshold. Now, if you go beyond that, of course, you're going to get um, CO2 starting to, uh, you know, increase again. And eventually those are the mechanisms along with, uh, you know, increased lactate, hydrogen, etc., that will cause fatigue. But this is what we will actually do in the laboratory uh, in terms of actually determining the anaerobic threshold uh, with ventilatory data. We could also do the same thing with the lactate threshold. Uh, threshold as well so again we do a submaximal incremental exercise test uh, and we'd look we'd, we'd actually measure the lactate at the end of each stage however long that stage might be and as the exercise gets more intense the idea is that um, the lactate will start to exponentially rise uh, and normally the lactate threshold is uh, occurs at a similar kind of running velocity or exercise intensity as the anaerobic threshold there can be a give or take of uh, a stage here or there and some individuals but they generally occur uh, at a similar stage because they are reflecting uh, similar physiological uh, mechanisms so one of the good things about the anaerobic threshold is we can actually use it to predict performance as well so quite often it's actually used for uh, monitoring training uh, it's a good predictor of uh, marathon pace as well so in the example that we've got on the screen here is if you have an individual whose uh, anaerobic threshold occurs at around about 12 kilometers an hour then essentially what you're actually having is that we can calculate their running speed uh, in on the actual marathon day so we know that a marathon is about 42 kilometers in distance so what we're going to do is divide the f uh, 12 kilometers from 42 uh, and that's actually going to give us um, a, a run time of three hours 30 minutes so we know that at that kind of 12 kilometer pace and just under uh, that's below the anaerobic threshold it's very unlikely that the marathon runner is going to uh, accumulate fatigue uh, due to anaerobic energy sources uh, and so they'd hopefully be able to complete the marathon in uh, a relatively good time
Okay, so while I do have a video on improving your anaerobic threshold with training, I do appreciate that at the time it was filmed, um, it had um, the camera started to go in and out of focus, uh, and I was also writing with a marker pen, which caused quite a lot of um, uh, sounds on the paper, which weren't very good sounds. Uh, so essentially, uh, th this slide here is actually uh, similar to what I presented in that video, but a lot briefer. Uh, essentially, what you want to do with improving your anaerobic threshold threshold is to do interval training um, so you want to be in a state where you're quite close or at the anaerobic threshold and also going beyond the anaerobic threshold so you're accumulating large amounts of lactate uh, and that's going to stimulate some of the physiological adaptations um, in your in your body to enable your anaerobic threshold to be kind of um, moved higher okay so you can train for longer in that uh, anaerobic zone between ventilatory threshold one and two or that isocapnic buffering phase as well now what you want to do is manipulate the work to rest ratio so uh, you want to be working quite hard but then you want to make sure that you rest just enough so that you're recovered for your next bout of exercise, but not enough, not long enough that the lactate is cleared away. You don't want the lactate to actually um, uh, clear away during your rest period. You want that lactate to accumulate uh, over the successive exercise bouts. So uh, one of the common methods is to do the two to one work rest ratio. So you might train for four minutes at quite high intensity, uh, and then you rest for two minutes. That two minutes is not enough time for lactate to be completely cleared uh, and there's some training examples that one could actually use so i think the most important thing with the anaerobic threshold is actually first to get your aerobic fitness uh, to a good level so making sure that you do general endurance training things like five kilometer runs um, are really very good because they're quick and they do uh, develop um aerobic pathways but if you push on a 5k run you're going to be pushing into uh, the anaerobic uh, energy metabolism territory as well uh, you can actually increase the um, uh, runs to 8k uh, 10k as well so you can actually vary that up a bit as well that will all have a, a beneficial effect on the cardiorespiratory system now you can also do hill running, cycling. They're very good ways to actually enhance the anaerobic pathways uh, because they will actually require large effort. Uh, they're quite intense. You're going to be producing quite a lot of lactate. Uh, you're going to elicit that shuttling, the mechanism that shuttles lactate from type 2 fibers to type 1 fibers. So all of those things would be activated um, by doing uh, this type of training. Uh, and of course, four times four minute stages uh, with two minute rest and you can do that for all types of activities whether that be rowing cycling running uh, you can use swimming as well um, and essentially what you're trying to do is increase the time that you're at at the anaerobic threshold or ventilatory threshold um, and of course you can also utilize it depending on the sport that you play uh, and do four times uh, 10 minute stages so much longer stages uh, and again have a, a rest period which is about five minutes um, and again that will ensure that the lactate will not have enough time to clear away so there's lots of different approaches i think the key thing is to find which one works best for you uh, also to use the knowledge and wisdom of coaches who are very experienced in actually um, improving endurance performance as well uh, there is a lot a lot of literature out there now in terms of um, you know ways that training variables can be manipulated but i think as a starting point um, and as something even for a, a, a more kind of um, um, uh, serious uh, athlete this would be a good plan that you could actually uh, utilize so guys there you have it i hope that you've enjoyed uh, today's video it's a follow-on from uh, those popular videos from a couple of years ago um, and as i say it builds on the information that was presented in those videos uh, and that i talked about in the acsm uh, article that i was uh, invited to write um, hopefully the video has been useful please do drop me uh, a comment um, i'm more than happy to read your thoughts uh, about the video uh, about your training and about how you might utilize some of this to improve your own anaerobic threshold uh, and thank you as always for your support and i'll hopefully see you again on the next video